I'm going to talk for a few minutes about, uh, you know, part of, of the way Christians, Christianity has fallen short of Jesus teachings as well, and, and talk for a few minutes about uh, sort of liberal Islamophobia, um, liberal anti-Muslim bigotry, which is just as, as, as problematic as other forms as well. So let me share my screen, hopefully correctly this time. Um, so there's sort of four ways that, that I have seen liberal anti-Muslim bigotry play out. Um, one is around the hijab and dress codes. Uh, second is with religion as being portrayed as, as simply irrational or the source of all problems, that sort of thing. Uh, the next is just simply the complexity of reading uh, religious texts out of context when the difference between our culture and our experience is so very different uh, from the, the context and the experience of the people at the time they were written. And then lastly, uh, you know, a lot of uh, sort of progressive -y people uh, sort of reduce a response to, to a matter of feelings. And so I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit too. But first, let's talk about the hijab. Uh, this photo here, may, may, this picture here may be uh, somewhat familiar to you. Um, if we were alive, I would ask you who this person is. And uh, of course, uh, this happens to be Mary, the mother of Jesus. And, uh, and what is that, of course, beside the crown, uh, what, what is that on her head? Uh, that is essentially a hijab, because in the Middle Eastern world, um, it, particularly around the, around the Mediterranean, uh, a woman's hair was a semi-private part of her body. And so it wasn't typically displayed in public. So in the home, uh, they, they would take off uh, their head covering, but out in public, they wouldn't. And, uh, and this was not you know, really about oppression. This was just about a different kind of cultural sensibility around human bodies. And, uh, and, and of course, there's all kinds of mores and understandings of that around the world in different contexts. And, and so um, there is within the Christian scripture also uh, some conversation about head covering and that sort of thing as well. Uh, that's again, a very contextual kind of uh, conversation there and one that I don't have time to go into today. And that's actually part of the issue, right? that there's a lot of complexity in all of our culture. And so if someone, you know, 2000 years from now were to, you know, decode this video and have us talk about this, there's a lot that we're trying to say today very quickly in context, inside of a cultural context that they would not understand at all. They'd have to work for a long time. The other piece about the hijab that's important to say out loud is that there's also a dress code for men in Islam. And so a lot of times, you know, people assume that because women wear the hijab uh, in, in, or in Islam, that they have to, that they're forced to do so. Um, and of course, uh, that's not the case at all, because in Islam, uh, religion, God does not allow in, in Islam religion to be used in a coercive way. Um, so people need to make their own choices about that. So a second piece of sort of liberal or progressive Islamophobia is, is in the media, a lot of times in the entertainment media. Uh, Bill Maher is a, a very uh, consistent uh, person who, who promotes anti-Muslim bigotry. Um, here he's seen with a white uh, supremacist, a white nationalist um, on his show, and he constantly degrades Islam, but basically all religion together. And the, the odd thing about that, of course, is that you know, Bill Maher is angry at some religious folk for falling short of our ideals. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but he, he's also sort of blames religion for collective blame by using collective blame against all people who are uh, of a religious tradition. And so I, I find him funny sometimes, but, but there is, uh, there's something there that I, I find really, really negative and, um, and corrosive. Um, because the fact of the matter is there may be people who do bad things because Bill Maher said things, right? So um, there is a lot of, of negativity in the, in the media uh, in general uh, about, about Muslims and Islam, but there's a lot negative about religion in general. And, uh, and I just think that that's, that that's problematic. We're not trying to proselytize any of you. We're just trying to, to acknowledge that there is some anti-religious bigotry um, within our, our, our country. And um, so it, the Abrahamic traditions in general, you know, have two or possibly three core teachings. Um, to love God more than your tribe and tradition, to learn to see all human beings as human. 
and to recognize them as equally human with you, even if they speak differently, worship differently, or don't worship, even if they have a different culture. Second is to notice that our self-interest and the self-interest of our neighbors are connected and that we need to hold what's best for us and what's best for our neighbor in tension with each other, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and to make sure that I don't take all the food so my neighbor has some because we live in a larger neighborhood or a larger world. Uh, these two uh, are, are widely understood to be the core of the Abrahamic tradition. And then lastly, there's plenty in both the Hebrew, the Hebrew, Hebrew scripture, the Christian scripture, and in the Quran about managing the economy equitably within the limits of the ecosystem. So these ideals, of course, um, are incredibly high ideals. And of course, people of religious faith fall short of them many times, just as all of us who hold high ideals fall short of them, which is why in all of our traditions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and many other religions, there's also a very powerful um, tradition of self-critique, of critiquing our community, critiquing how we have behaved in the past, remembering our failures, and striving to live up more fully to these core principles of the Abrahamic tradition, which are really about, again, recognizing human beings, seeing our needs as interconnected, mutual interdependence, and that we also have to care for our planet um, and make sure that people have what they need to eat. And so th the next piece here really goes back to that sort of how do we interpret uh, scripture? And again, scripture is very, very challenging uh, sometimes. This is a picture by Vermeer um, of Jesus, Mary, and Martha. It's a somewhat famous story where uh, Martha is in the kitchen and she's cooking food and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. And uh, the typical uh, interpretation of this passage is that Mary is sitting in a subservient position to Jesus. She's kneeling by his feet. Um, so she's subservient to him. And then Martha comes out of the kitchen and is just kind of upset that she's not getting the help she needs with the kitchen work. So she's lazy. Like that's kind of a typical interpretation. But if we understand the culture of first century Mediterranean world, we understand a couple of things that really changes the perspective, perspective here. Number one is that in the first century in Palestine, Jewish women were not allowed to be rabbis. Okay, That's, that was just the truth. They taught their children in the home, but they did not do public theology or public philosophy or public debate. To sit at Jesus' feet is a euphemism for being accepted into Jesus' rabbinical school. So she is sitting at his feet is an act of incredible um, feminism on Jesus' part and hers. They're both risking their lives to see that Mary is able to be a, a rabbi someday to teach in public after going to Jesus' rabbinical school. And Martha comes out of the kitchen, sees the risk that they're taking, and wants to protect them. And so Martha is showing courage and love. Mary is showing courage and love, and so is Jesus. And yet how far short Christians have fallen of, of, uh, our, of, our, uh, of Jesus' teachings by not uh, widely having women be pastors until recently, and even now many churches don't allow uh, for female clergy or pastors or leaders. And so Christianity has fallen way short of our own ideals and of Jesus' own actions, where he risked his life uh, to put a, a female into a position of public leadership. So um, what I, what I want to say about this is that one of the challenges for any religious movement, a group trying to move forward with very powerful ideals and be a change movement within a larger culture, is that sometimes we don't win right away. Right? So Jesus had women in leadership within his own uh, disciples. They were the first ones to, to be there at his resurrection, so say the stories, right? So Jesus had women in positions of leadership, but the Roman Empire generally didn't. And that empire slowly wore down some of these new things. And so now today, because we can understand the cultural context of the Christian scriptures, we can begin to uncover and see what Jesus' real teachings were. That same kind of work needs to be done to understand the Quran. 
and to read the Quran without a Muslim teacher helping you to understand what it means, how the text is understood by that community, what it meant in its original context, is to do violence to the text, it's to do violence to the persons who wrote it, it's to do violence in a way to the community that, that still uses and reads that text today. And so we all have to recognize the importance of context as we read any scripture, as we read Shakespeare, for instance, or any other significant writing. And those are the ways that, that and lastly, I just want to say that, that there are times when, when progressives tend to think that the whole thing is just about feelings, that if we just all felt more positively about people, it'd all be fine. But the reality is feelings aren't enough. We have to work together uh, to achieve policy changes, to respect the religious liberty of Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, Christians, and, and atheists and agnostics in this country, so that people can do what they're called to do and what they feel is best. And so we have to work to change policy, not just to feel uh, more positively.